Good evening, everyone. What a great joy to see all of you once again. And welcome to the Celebrity Club. And we are talking about some of the hero of faith, people in different walks of life, and they have been successful, and they have been known to many people. And tonight, we have the privilege to talk together and study and learn from uh, one of the women of God, very powerful woman of God called Apostle Brooke Crawford. And she's going to share with us a wonderful story about her life, her ministry, about the call that God has given to her, and uh, in some way that you and I will be blessed in many ways, and you and I will receive the abundant blessing of the Lord from the teaching of God's servant tonight. So welcome to the show and welcome to the Vision TV tonight. And would you please just uh, introduce to our audience out there um, about where do you grow up and uh, how does God call you into the ministry? Well, first of all, uh, Pastor, I want to thank you for uh, inviting me. I'm very honored to be here tonight and um, thank you so much. And I appreciate that because it's always good to to uh, be free to be able to minister the word of God wherever you go. So, well, it, it's I'm going to try to make a very long story very short. Uh, so, uh, excuse me. I am originally from the Midwest, and I grew up in the Midwest, and my parents were basically um, Christians, and so I kind of grew up under Christian uh, uh, home and uh, church, but my calling did not come until I was well into my 30s, mm. and I was married, and I had my children, and my um, ministry, part of my life didn't develop until after I had pretty much retired from my profession which mm. I was a social worker for uh, the County of Los Angeles. Mm. And so during that period of time in my life, uh, I had backslidden and my desire was to come back to the Lord and to repent and allow him to use me whatever way he desired. What gave you the desire to come back to the Lord and begin to serve him? Well, it was the Holy Spirit. Um, because what happened was I had an accident, an automobile accident, and it was a very serious automobile accident. And at that time, um, the injuries that I had um, had, they um, did not permit me to speak. And being a social worker you know you have to be able to communicate you have mm. to be able to speak my jaw was dislocated as a result of the accident and so my ability to speak to chew swallow eat all of that uh it was took damaged completely wow. and so i was off work for about six months due to that the medical treatment that I had to have and all of that. So I had to uh, write everything down that I spoke to people because I couldn't talk and I, I, I couldn't chew. I lost a lot of weight. So I was in a desperate situation. Uh, I had excruciating pain in my jaw and we did not realize that my jaw was dislocated until several weeks after the accident mm -hmm. because we couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to speak. But yeah. I had all this excruciating pain. Well, to make a very, very long story short, uh, I had to go back uh, into treatment and that was full-time treatment for over a period of three to five years. Wow. And so... That's when, a long period. Yes, yes. And so I was off of my job and during that period of time, that's when I began to seek God again and ask the Lord to bring me back to Him. Mm. And so I was so desperate because of the excruciating pain that I had experienced and nothing was helping the pain. Nothing was alleviating any of the suffering in my jaw, in my head. Uh, I had encephalitis. Uh, 
My brain had swollen, I couldn't hardly breathe. One side of my nostril was completely closed. I had to sleep sitting up because when I would lay down, I would have so much pain. Um, I finally was able to walk again. Uh, my spine was twisted and I looked like a person who had had a severe stroke. And uh, when my speech started coming back and I was able to talk and I had to see a specialist for my jaw and the debut joint. So over the course of the many years, but I returned back to work after almost about six months, but I had constant pain again. And so in that process of going in and out, finally got to the point where I said, Lord, I'm ready to come up higher in you. And when I said that to the Lord, about two months following that, God sent me to this church all by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I had no idea where I was going with church. And so I get on the freeway, the Holy Spirit directed me to the church. Wow. And I listened to what he said because I had made him a promise. I said, from now on, whatever you tell me to do, Lord, I'm going to do it immediately. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to question you. I'm just going to obey. Amen. And so he reminded me of that, that day on the freeway, and he directed me to the new church that I was supposed to go to. My first three months of that, in that new church, the Lord did not allow anyone to talk to me. That's strange. Yes, and God does very mysterious things sometimes, and we don't know the reasons why, but we just need to follow him. So this is what happened, and not only that, but I, he wouldn't allow me to talk to anyone, and he wouldn't allow anyone to talk to me. So my relationship with him became stronger and stronger, because when I would go to church, he was the only person that I could talk to. Amen. And so every, every sermon that the pastor preached, the bishop preached, it, 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 God made it where it was exactly just for me. It was like he saw into my life, and he's a prophet of God, and he just knew everything that I was going through. And that That is the preparation so, for the coming ministry. Yes. And the fact that today you are here, and you have been in ministry, you have been, she has been traveling in so many countries of the world, and yes. got promoted her from one ministry to another ministry, and later she will share about the men, the mighty men, women of God that she has been uh, working with and serving together, together with. And then after that, uh, if I uh, remember cor correctly, that you begin with the prayer ministry. Yes. So would you yes. just talk a little bit about when God called you and in you have prayer. that vision and passion for that. So, hey, yeah, so, about <laughs> Hallelujah. So would you be to share about that one? Yes, okay. So this is what happened. Um, how I got into the prayer ministry was at this church that the Holy Spirit sent me to. And for three to four months, this kept happening. And I said, Lord, why do I cry every time through the whole message? And the message was very personal. It was like, like he was only talking only to me, you know, in the in the in the audience in the congregation. And so finally, there was a, a, a announcement that was made and said we need people to work in the prayer center. You know, uh, we need volunteers to volunteer so to the prayer center. So what is that ministry that you mentioned about? It was called the. It was the Church of the Harvest Ministry. Mm -hmm. And it was in Los Angeles. And so when I started going there, and that's when God called me to that, he says, I want you to go outside as soon as the service is over and sign up for the prayer ministry. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, Lord, I can't do that. I don't even know how to pray. I said, how am I going to pray for other people? I don't know how to pray for myself or other people. You see, many of us have the same the same kind of thought. Many times that yes. God called us into ministry, and we pray that through her sharing, that you and I will begin to have the confidence and begin to just trust God and just obey God. Whether it is in the prayer ministry, reception ministry, or m children ministry, or prison ministry, and just respond to the call of God. And yes, and so 
My hands were shaking. I was just writing out my tithes and my offering at the time when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me. So at the service, I obeyed. I went outside and I signed up. I was the very first person to sign up. The lady got so excited. That was the first time I was able to talk to anybody in the whole church. Yeah. And so she goes, oh, you're the number one person that's supposed to sign up. And I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what is she talking about? Yeah, let us be the number one. Yes. When God called us, amen. <laughs> right, you're the number one. Yeah. So that was the beginning of me. He said, I want you to go to that meeting that's going to be held on Saturday. I want you to get there exactly at 9 o'clock. And I said, Lord, but I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to pray. He said, that's why I called you to it. Mm. So we know it's God. When he calls you to something that he knows you cannot do without his help. It's always him yes. when that is the case. It doesn't matter what your gifts are, your talents, your abilities. He don't want you to rely on yourself. He wants you to rely on him. Amen. And without him, we can do nothing. So he knew I had to totally rely on him, Pastor, in order to do what this assignment was that he called me to. So you do the intercessory and you receive call from people and prayer. And yes. would you please just share some of the um, some of the miracles that you have seen in your ministry through the prayer ministry? Oh wow. You oh it's amazing. First of all, those five years that I worked in the prayer center mm -hmm. at the church and so God said, now I need you to tell the elder that you're going to go on sabbatical. I said, what? He says, yes, you're going on sabbatical. I said, okay, but why am I going on sabbatical? He said, that's none of your business. <laughs> and so I said, okay, Lord, I'm going on sabbatical. So I called them, and actually I went in person because I by this time I was the coordinator of the prayer center mm. and so I just knew I was just going to be doing that for the rest of my life I love that you know I was kind of like hidden in the closet I would open and close the prayer center I would pray over the prayer ministers uh, you know and so I was one of the uh, main leaders of the prayer uh, center for that ministry and we would get calls all over from all over the country all over the world, different nations. Mm. And so I started seeing God doing miracles in the lives of the people that he would have me pray for right there in the prayer center. Mm. And so one of the amazing miracles, this is the first time I raised someone from the dead. Wow. So God used my mouth because I had learned my prayer language is that uh, um, during your sabbatical year, you begin to travel to other country and begin to pray? All no, the here? sabbatical started mm -hmm. after that. Yeah. So um, my experience in the prayer center, and when over the phone, a woman calls in, the Holy Spirit tells me that he directed the call immediately to me. Mm. And that every call I had ever gotten in the prayer center over a period of five years, the Lord said, I am the one that sent those calls to you. And so he gave me the boldness. And he and so what happened was I spoke to her sister. Her sister called for her. And she was in a hospital room. And the doctors had already pronounced her dead. And she said, well, give me one more chance. I'm going to call this person or this ministry for them to pray for my sister. And for her to wake up out of unconsciousness because they'd already declared her that and her whole family was there. So I get the call. I answered the call and uh, I asked her sister to tell me what's going on. She said, my, my sister's in a diabetic coma. She is, they have uh, declared her dead already. And immediately I began to pray in tongues. And when I did that, God gave me the interpretation of what I prayed. Yes. So I gave her the interpretation, and this is what it was. The Lord said that this is not unto death. You will live and not die, and I'm totally healing you of this diabetes. Praise the Lord. And so I told her that. I gave her the interpretation, 
what the Lord had said to me. And so uh, I pleaded the blood of Jesus and I commanded her to open her eyes to let them know that she was alive and that she was not dead because you could hear the everything that I'm saying to you. Mm. Jesus is standing over you right now. He's totally healing you. And I said, you will call me back in exactly seven days. And so here I was prophesying. Here I was ministering to her I, uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so basically that's how my ministry started. She came out of the coma. She could not talk, but she, she opened her eyes like I had commanded her to do in the name of Jesus. So the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost raised her right there. And I said, in three days, you will be leaving the hospital and you will give this testimony to the doctors and they will get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and she it, called and me back exactly there. in seven, seven days, days and she was totally healed. She no more, had no more diabetes and she talked to me on the phone. Praise the Lord. And that's awesome. And I'm, that was the beginning. I'm looking forward yes. to seeing that sister to come here and sit together with you and begin to tell oh, wow. one of our viewers about that wonderful miracles. Yes. And uh, for our brothers and sisters and our friends who are watching and worshiping together with us over there, that just keep on believing in the Lord. Our God is still doing the miracles. Yeah. And yes. just keeping trusting and praying together and maybe some of you else there you're also praying and desperately you're also praying for greatest miracles of your life at this moment and let us pray together in the moment that God is going to deliver God is going to bless you God is going to heal you yes. and God is going to give you the greatest miracles ever you have ever seen and you will experience more of him and then after that yes yes so after that it, it, it was like more and more you know raising people and this was over the phone so that was the first one that i did mm. oh there's been so many because many of the nations that i've traveled to and preached the word of god that god would open the doors he would have ministers call me at my house on the phone i said lord i said if and he said, and so when I went on the sabbatical, uh, this is when he told me this. And I would pray for people to get healed, get delivered, you know, all kinds of prayers. God taught me how to pray different types of prayers mm. for different circumstances. And so he taught me directly. He said, I will teach you everything you need to know wow. about how to pray. And he did that. And so as time went on and I became more and more involved in that and so finally when that day came when he said tell the elder you're going on sabbatical he said now is the time so i said okay lord as soon as i obeyed and did that that's when god took me to the next level the next, the level. next stage of my ministry and then you become an, a traveling evangelist after that yes i became a traveling evangelist but amazing it was a miracle even how all of that happened mm. So when I went on the sabbatical and I was still praying, I'm in the prayer closet, I said, oh, Lord, I didn't, I want, I love this. I just want to stay in secret places with you, you know, in prayer and interceding and helping people that way. And he said, I have called you to want something else. And I said, what? Mm -hmm. I said, well, what was all of that? Because I was there five years. Mm -hmm. He said, that was only your training. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> oh, no. He says, I will tell you when to leave this ministry because that was only your training. And I said, well, what am I going to do when I leave? He said, I have called you to start a Bible study. I said, what? I said, no, Lord. I don't want a church. I don't want to be no preacher. No, I don't want to do that. He said, what did you tell me several years ago? that whatever I asked you to do, you said you would do it. Amen. So we have to be very careful with our prayer. Yeah, so uh, whatever we say. <laughs> you know, the sometime that it's that Lord just, uh, just, uh, just, um, uh, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> and then when the Lord said, just forgive your neighbor, and then you said, Lord, that's impossible that I'm going to forgive. You see, sometimes that we want, we pray, Lord, I want to be like you. 
And are you are we serious to pray, uh, pray like that? Or sometimes we say that, Lord, send me to the nation. Watch out with what our prayer. Yes. And when God begins to call you Amen. and begins to send you, ah, yes, but uh, somehow it's also very challenging, but it's also exciting because we yes. begin to be directed yes. by the Lord Amen. rather than by our own self. Yes. And, and that's, that's how the journey continues. Okay, so this is how this came about. So I said, what? He says, I want you to start a Bible study. I said, now there you go telling me to do something you know I can't do. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Where would I have it? Where will the people come from? You know, so God wanted me to trust him every step of the way, everything. And so all of this time, my husband is like freaking out because he's like, look, you're already up 3 a.m. in the morning praying, making all this noise in the house. And now... You're going to do something else? Now, what is this, this time? You know, he was just really upset with the whole thing. I said, look, I'm sorry, honey. I said, but I got to obey God. Amen. <laughs> and so I said, okay, Lord. I said, if you, if this is you really telling me this, I said, you need to get me a witness. Somebody somewhere who don't know me, never heard of me, never seen me, don't know where I came from, to tell me what you're telling me now. That you need the I confirmation. Am, yes. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you need to give me this confirmation. I can't do nothing without you, but I want to be absolutely sure this is what you want me to do. Mm. And so the Lord was quiet. You know how he gives you that silent act. Mm. And I said, okay, I know what that means. <laughs> I just better be quiet and just wait because I'm afraid if I say something, he's going to do it. <laughs> so whenever you ask God for something, you better be sure that that's what you really want because God will do it. Amen. So I asked him for a witness. I asked him for someone who don't know me, never heard of me, don't know where I came from to confirm that he told me to start a Bible study. So... This is what happened, Pastor. This is another miracle story. Uh, one evening, about two or three days later, after I asked the Lord to do that, I get a call, and I answered the phone. And so the person says, may I speak to Pastor Brooke Crawford? I'm like, Pastor Brooke Crawford? I said, no, I'm sorry, but you have the wrong number. Because I'm not a pastor. I didn't have a church, no ministry, nothing. All I had done was just stepped out of the prayer center, went on sabbatical. You know, I'm still going to the same church, but I went on sabbatical. I go on sabbatical. And so this man calls me and he goes, no, uh, well, I said, well, I'm sorry, you have the wrong phone number. And so he said, well, I said, there's no Pastor Brooke Crawford here. And he said, well, then may I speak to Brooke Crawford? <laughs> and I said, yes, this is she. <laughs> and I noticed he had an accent. So I'm like, oh, wow, Lord, where is he calling from? He said, the Lord told me to tell you. Now, I never got the man's name. The Lord told me to tell you that he says for you to start a Bible study. I said, what? I said, what? Well, how did you get my phone number? Mm -hmm. He said, the Lord gave it to me. Mm -hmm. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, for me to tell you, Pastor. He said, you are a pastor. That's what he told me. Mm -hmm. I said, but. I said, okay. Because the Holy Spirit said, be quiet and listen. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. He said, you're. You are to start a Bible study. And I said, well, did the Lord tell you when? He said, no, but he indicated to me it should be immediately. Amen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, sometimes that we think that the Lord uh, have to speak to us through other people for the very, very big things. But actually... God speaks to us in many different ways. Just start something very small. That is so true. Something is very small, but that will be the indication of the great things are going to, to come. We have to start wow. everything from very small. 
so that we can be trained, you can learn, and God, how God sharpen us, develop us, and prepare us for the greater future ministry. So, somewhere, someone else there, over there, and if you are still wavering, if you're still hesitating, and you're still pondering, and you still said, Lord, I need confirmation, this and that, but begin to get be, co be courageous and begin to just trust the Lord and begin to move forward whether it's maybe it's just uh, serving at the table it's maybe just keep the church clean or maybe just go into the community one-on-one uh, -on -one, or go to, from house to house and begin to give the gospel track or to share the gospel with someone maybe something is can be very small to give food to the poor or maybe some other thing that you just God just call you that go somewhere and to bring certain clothes and to give and when you obey you begin to see God open the next step for you yes. and what is the next step after that from the Bible school Bible study yes so I obey God and I began to pray a lot because I had no clue what direction to move in or how to do any of this. And I said, Lord, you have to show me. You have to teach me and show me every step of the way. I get a call from one of the elders that I work with in, in the church. And he calls me and he says this to me. He said, oh, hi, uh, Brooke. Uh, I said, oh, hi. He goes, I was praying. And he said, the Lord said to me, that you are to meet the apostle from Africa. Mm. I said, what? He said, yes, he's coming out here in about two weeks. Mm. And the Lord said that you are to meet him. Mm. And that I am supposed to instruct him to send you his resume. Mm. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> Do you still remember that the name of the apostle? Yes. Because it turned out to be the apostle who ordained me as an evangelist, confirmed me as a prophet and an apostle. Wow. <laughs> we need to tell, tell the people there and all of us about the name of that apostle. Okay. His name is Apostle Joseph Masala, mm -hmm. and he's from South uh, Africa, yeah. uh, from the area near Pretoria and Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be the apostle who had called me on the phone had, and told me what the Lord had said about starting a Bible study. Oh, so he was the one who called so you. So he was the one that I had gotten a call from because, see, I never had gotten the man's name that I had spoke to over the phone. Mm. And I knew he had an accent. And so when I had said to God, let it be someone who don't know me, never heard of me, they can be out of the country. They can be from anywhere, Lord. You know, but, and I will know that that is you. And literally, he called me from South Africa that night. Wow. Halfway around the world. So see, God will give you a witness. You don't know where or what it may be or where it's coming from. But in my case, the Lord just had a man he gave him my phone number through prayer because mm. I asked him where did you get my phone number he said the Lord gave it to me mm. all the way from South Africa calling to America here in California just to tell me what the Lord said to confirm to me wonderful isn't that awesome it's awesome yes now, uh, as we are going to close for the first part here and I would like, would like to challenge all of you over there maybe sometime that God can use a man of woman of God to bring that confirmation to us many times that God just give you the passion and the desire in order to do certain things many times that when you read the Bible and the God just just begin to speak to you and this is the thing that you need to do sometimes that God can also reveal in the dream then when you saw the dream and you puzzle about that one yes. and you ponder about that one and many some uh, sometimes that God just bring you to a place for a short-term mission trip and there you begin to find that you have that calling whatever the ways that God is teaching you or speaking to you or confirming oh, to you yeah. Yeah. one of the very important thing is that we need to say yes to him yes. we need to say yes to him and i'm sure that many of you there you are still wondering what is the next step that you're going to do would you please just pray for the people yes. over there that mm -hmm. the lord is going to lead them 
and begin to, 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 to encourage them and give them the bonus to say yes to the calling that God has calling them to do. Would you please just pray for them yes, right I'd now? Yes, I'd be more than happy to, uh, Pastor. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you right now, Lord. We just thank you for this program. We thank you for those who come here tonight to hear your word. We just thank you for those out in, in the television audience that is hearing this prayer and the sound of my voice. Lord God, that you speak to their hearts, speak, minister into them, begin to open up to them their spirit and their heart to receive what you want to say to them, Lord. Give them a desire to want to come after you, to find out their purpose, their destiny, their calling in their lives. Just as you did with me, I got desperate for you. I wanted to be delivered from all the pain and the suffering. And that's what happens with us when we don't have you in our lives, Lord. And so I just ask you right now to just really, really open up their spirit, open their heart up and mind to have a desire to want to seek after you, to become more like you, and really, really mean it. Because you have given us your Holy Spirit to become sons of God. And it's impossible to be a son of God without your spirit living inside of us. And so I just want to thank you right now that you're moving in them and those who need healing, those who need deliverance. Father God, in the name of Jesus, because Jesus paid the price so that we could be healed, so that we could be delivered, so that we could be made free to become all that you birthed us in this earth to become, which is being in the image of you. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have sent us here to preach the gospel to the poor, to be for the, the sick to be made well, for the deaf to hear, the blind to see, the lame to walk. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's ministering into the people right now and doing many miracles because you are a miracle-working God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching with us. We'll come back in a moment. And then we are talking about the next level of him, her ministry together. Uh, like uh, Evangelist Maurice Cerullo, Pastor Benny Hinn, and uh, Prophet Correll, Michelle Correll, and others. And uh, stay tuned. And we're going back in a moment. And we'll hear more about the things that God has used her. And welcome to the, uh, the Celebrity Club. God bless you.